Hey, it's Mike here, and today, Weston A. Price, as well as the Weston A. Price Foundation, debunked. Occasionally, I will land on their website, and my jaw will just drop about what they're talking about, and under last week's video, two of you recommended this randomly, so no better time than now. For those of you that don't know, Weston A. Price was a guy who went around the world and said, hey, those people with worse teeth have a modern diet, so people should be following their ancestral diets, which of course leads to people nowadays promoting a ton of animal fat. And yes, I'm a vegan, and people might try to use that to easily dismiss this video, but there's so much more than vegan versus non-vegan things about this foundation that need to be highlighted, and just about the historical works of Weston A. Price that we need to look at, because it's just interesting. And of course, need to mention that this video is sponsored by Seed Symbiotics. We're not gonna talk about them now, but we'll briefly cover them in a bit. Let's just get started. We're gonna start off with the dentist, born in Ohio, born in 1870, by the name of Weston A. Price, or as I like to call him, WAP. If you know what it means, you know what it means. If you don't, you're gonna be disappointed in me. Bucket and a mop, I'm WAP. I am WAP, find them cavities a lot. I am WAP, I am WAP. As a master's in public health student who's actually getting pretty close to finishing, not quite there yet though, it's really fascinating what he did going around the world and just going, you have good teeth, you have bad teeth, and then throwing a theory in as to why. However, as we'll get to, those theories are largely bogus and just his dentistry beliefs will actually blow your mind. And there's been a lot of criticism of his conclusions, at least that were drawn from his methodology, which was essentially just measuring what percentage of teeth had cavities based on which population. And then he would just sort of anecdotally observe their diet. He would not take any sort of other disease data or longevity data. Of course, he has his critics. One of them is Dr. Barrett from Quackwatch, who says, quote, while extolling health, talking about the native population, he ignored their short life expectancy and high rates of infant mortality, endemic disease, and malnutrition. But the Weston A. Price Foundation retorts with, no, he actually was a good scientist. He even came back and did more studies when he got back. But he, again, never looked at some of the most important metrics of health. For a population example of how he conflated dental health with overall health, <laughs> not using enough data, we can look to the Maasai. Oh, they're an African tribe. He said they had great teeth in those high dental arches and pointed to their diet, mentioning the splendid nutrition provided by their cattle products, namely meat, milk, and blood. Though low carb salespeople like Nina Chai Schultz, who I've covered before, try to make the Maasai out to be really healthy as well, the reality is looking to the data even back in the day from Mann, the researcher who Nina Teicholz mentions, but fails to mention, found that the Maasai had extensive atherosclerosis and artery thickening equal to older US men. These are people who are dying young of battle and infections and on and on, although even heart disease unequivocally. And while he made seemingly legitimate counts of cavities, he failed to take actual dietary measurements. They were just gut feelings about what he saw people eat or thought people ate. And one example is meat in the Maasai culture. From this UN report, meat was quote, consumed irregularly and cannot be classified as a staple food. And despite how his name is used to push animal fat in the form of meat, I don't actually think he was that pro meat in the sense that he thought it was required here. I mean, looking to the population of Swiss people he looked at eating a traditional diet, they said had great teeth. Even he mentions in his book that they only ate meat once or twice a week. And a lot of low carb people point to Weston A. Price, but he didn't even seem to be against cereals either. He looked at populations like those of Kenya that had even half the rate of cavities as the Maasai, just very, very low rates, 0.2%. And their diet also consisted of cereals and sweet potatoes. And we see the same 0.2% super low level from a tribe in Sudan. They also ate cereals. So yeah, you don't need to ditch carbs to have good teeth even back then. But to once again echo that teeth aren't everything back then, to estimate Sudan's life expectancy was probably in the 40s when even the US who was saying it was horrible, bad dental health, they had up in the 60s. And for the final example, he went to the Eskimos, we'll say Inuit people, and said, oh, they have less than 1% of their teeth with cavities, so they're doing great, they're healthy. 
No, if you look to mummies, they have the highest rate of atherosclerosis in the world of all the mummies <laughs> looked at, and that's compared to higher carb areas of the world. And while it's unfortunately influenced by inequality as well, it's still worth mentioning that Inuit populations tend to live about 10 years less than their surrounding populations. But Weston A. Price's views on what actually caused cavities is probably the most laughable of all. He didn't ascribe to what we now know of the, you know, sugar and other foods can build up on the teeth, create bacteria that leads to an acidic environment that wears away enamel and causes damage. He argued against that saying, hey, cleanliness doesn't even matter here. Why clean your teeth if they can never be fully clean? Let's take that further. Why wipe your butt? It can never be fully clean. <laughs> That's his logic. But his backup point for this is quote, another difficulty is the fact that many primitive races, hard for me to say, have their teeth smeared with starchy foods almost constantly and make no effort whatsoever to clean their teeth. In spite of this, they have no tooth decay. And I will say that is backed up today in terms of whole starches from this study of the foods they looked at. Whole grains had the strongest protective effect. And this is likely due to a higher fiber, lower energy density type of food instead of refined carbohydrates and sugars getting in there and doing damage. You know, many starchy foods are just high fiber, low enough calorie that they would almost clean your teeth. Also because of this bias lens, despite many native cultures cleaning their teeth, I mean, native indigenous Americans smashed hardwood and made little toothbrushes. He didn't even look for that. He didn't even document that. I don't even know if he asked. In the end, he says that, yo, yeah, people should clean their teeth though, but it's just like a courtesy to other people having to look at your teeth. Ridiculous. So what did he actually think? He believed that it was the stripping of nutrients of food that led to people just creating worse teeth in general, which is so obviously not the case with what we know now. So he was against sugar, but he thought it was just because the nutrients had been stripped away and therefore it wasn't building teeth as well. And his answer to this was foods like milk, which he said was super good and, and getting nutrients that would help your teeth. And in particular, that high vitamin butter was a must have, which is just ridiculous. Just considering how low butter's vitamins are in general, double them, you still have like nothing. And really he has an obsession with cow's milk in the diet, which is just highly fallacious in terms of being just a global ancestral diet, considering that 70% of the planet is lactose intolerant. He didn't have that type of information. He also wasn't aware that cow's milk was not part of 99.9% .9 of human history and evolution. He just didn't know these things. All right, before we get to more interesting stuff about Weston A. Price and the Weston A. Price Foundation, we need to take a quick break with Seed Symbiotics. Seed Symbiotics is a probiotic and a prebiotic that is engineered to survive the brutal, vengeful, acidic nature of your digestive system, which is where I believe that a lot of other probiotics have failed. Not only is the symbiotic vegan, but it also contains 54 billion AFUs or really active cell units from 24 different strains, which are scientifically backed to be helping you out. As you can see by their reference page, they have a ton of research as to why their product can support you in terms of digestive health, gut immunity, gut barrier, skin health, cardiovascular health, and more. It's delivered monthly and they give you refillable glass vials, including this on the go one, which I think is very nice and feels scientific-y. And it's all in algae-based and other eco-friendly packaging, which is why I personally believe SEED stands for Super Eco, Eat This. That's not what it stands for though. Also, since Lindy's gut score was worse than mine, I let her take them and she's still feeling like they're helping her out. So I just thought I'd share that. And you can get 15% off your first month's supply of Seed Symbiotic by clicking the link in the description below and using the code MIKE15, that's M-I-C-15 at checkout. All right, let's get back to it. It's also just incorrect to believe that primitive or paleolithic people just never had any cavities. Now we can look to this paleolithic sample from 13,000 years ago of a Moroccan hunter gatherer and yep, he has horrible teeth, probably a combination of eating a bunch of these sweet acorns that increased in sugar content when they were stored, as well as some land snails in their abrasive shells. Heck, this paleo tooth around the same time actually had a cavity drilled out and filled with things like tar, the first filling we can find. Oh, but that might've been as agriculture was starting while well, looking to this paper 54 million years ago, this primate had some cavities, so sorry. <laughs> anyway, to sum it up, we probably shouldn't be putting too much stock in a dentist 80 to 90 years ago who literally would have told you you didn't need to brush your teeth to prevent cavities, so. All right, now time to get to the WAP Foundation, the Weston A. Price Foundation, which was founded in 1999 by Sally Fallon, an author and a nutritionist named Mary Ennig. 
They have over 10,000 members and they glean from those members about one and a half million dollars a year, depending on the year. And while they claim none of their members are the livestock industry, they say that they have farmers, which technically would be part of the livestock industry. They just won't be part of the large scale corporations in the industry anyway. They run a bunch of campaigns like an anti-soy campaign or a pro raw dairy products campaign. And yeah, they're all about dairy fat <laughs> and really anything that comes from an animal so let's just get straight to the dietary guidelines. Number one, I agree with it. Eat whole foods, fine, non-controversial. Number two, they say eat beef and lamb, two class 2A carcinogens. They want organ meat and on and on eggs, pasture-fed animals, of course, eggs high in cholesterol. And I might as well mention, because there's a little bit of an oral fixation in this video, red meat, doesn't appear to be that great for oral health. We're talking higher red meat consumption being associated with worse periodontal disease markers when nuts were better. And daily red meat is associated with oral cancer at about 38% increased risk compared to those with less consumption. Next, they say eat fish from unpolluted waters as if that's possible. And they have carried prices, dairy fetish into the 21st century with number four, eat full fat milk products from pasture fed cows, preferably raw and or fermented such as raw milk, whole yogurt, kefir, cultured butter, full fat, raw cheeses, etc. More about raw dairy in a bit, but to number five, use animal fats such as lard, tallow, egg yolks, cream and butter liberally. Liberally directly against all of the major guidelines, but I feel like part of the appeal of this foundation is, oh, we say the opposite of what everybody else says and it happens to be what appeals to what you want emotionally, convenient and very sellable. Of course, all of those are loaded with saturated fat. Saturated fat, as we know from control feeding trials, raises cholesterol, LDL or bad cholesterol, as the European Society of Cardiology mentions, is causally linked to atherosclerosis. This is not what you want. Heart disease is our leading killer nationally and globally. And this is a chart of lesions by LDL level, and you can see just, just way more as you go up there. So, not good. And just from an anecdotal perspective, because I have a feeling people who like this foundation might respond to it, um, Plant Chompers, who did a sort of review of how long different health gurus live, well, here's what he has to say down at the lower end. It gets pretty crowded past 80, as it should. Starting with the 30-somethings on the left that died way too young and tragically left behind young families, the curious thing is they all promoted the dietary theories of the Weston Price Foundation. The oldest of the three was Stephen Behrens, who wrote four books, like this one on heart disease. He died of a stroke around age 40. He wrote very hard-hitting essays that are still online on the myths and dangers of vegetarianism. Maybe they were just unlucky, you know, statistics are statistics, but it could also be the absolute horrid diet advice, which continues with salt and how you should eat probably more of it. On this page, they say, yeah, eat one and a half teaspoons a day, which is, as they even say, twice the recommended amount. And that's equivalent to about 3000 milligrams of sodium directly. And I could do a whole video responding to the studies that deny the link between sodium and heart disease. A lot of them have to do with economic income disparities. But looking to this study in the New England Journal of Medicine, higher sodium consumption is responsible for about 1.65 million cardiovascular deaths per year in the world. Now onto soy, which is possibly the origin of one of the most persistent soy myths. They say that soy increases the risk of breast cancer. Well, looking to the actual research, studies like this over and over again, and this one, boom, all show higher soy associated with lower breast cancer and bad breast cancer outcomes. And for those that think it is, it's not just in Asian populations. This is a US and Canada study and found even stronger effects in mortality for white women with breast cancer. In those with breast cancer, higher soy consumption meant a 21% lower all-cause mortality rate, actually 27% for white women alone. Now onto raw milk. The FDA says it is dangerous to consume. The foundation attacked the FDA by saying that they were biased, that they weren't giving full access to the information, and that, of course, there were all of these other foods that were more dangerous, which happened to be a bunch of other foods they promote, such as meat and other meat. They also say that non-pasteurized milk is more dangerous when it gets recontaminated from certain outbreaks. I think that might be an argument to not be drinking any of those cow's milks. 
But it is also worth mentioning a later CDC report saying that raw milk makes you 840 times more likely to catch a foodborne illness and 45 times more likely to be hospitalized. And yes, three people have died from it. They also have promoted the GAPS diet, which is founded on the theory that a leaky gut leads to a bunch of largely mental diseases and diseases including autism. Well, I did a recent video which also highlighted some of the problems with the US News & World Report ranking. GAPS diet got number 39 out of 40, and that was for good reason. It's basically a low carb diet that advocates the consumption of animal fat with every single meal. Finally, it gives false hope to parents who think they're gonna put their children on this diet that has completely miscategorized what autism is. Anyway, the GAPS diet would need a whole video. It's a separate thing, so let's just move on to homeopathy, which they promote, if you don't know, it's like the dilution 10,000 times or a million times of things that are then given as medicine. And we have larger studies showing that it does not appear to help over placebo. There's no evidence for this. You know, it doesn't appear to be real beyond placebo, which, you know, placebo can, can work. And just to close it out, Dr. Harriet Hall, a retired Air Force Colonel of sciencebasedmedicine.org, highlighted some of the ask a doctor points that they had, and they're just honestly, frankly, off the rocker. One of them is measles is the only cure for nephrotic syndrome, which is a kidney disorder. Infections, particularly strep infections, cause cancer to resolve. And for high blood pressure, the outcomes are not affected by lowering blood pressure with medication, probably playing into their salt notions. And to sum it up, she declared that the Wesson A. Price Foundation was one of the worst sites on the internet. So in the end, what a dentist wrote 90 years ago, again, one that didn't even get dentistry right in terms of like brushing your teeth, doesn't really have a meaningful bearing on what we should do today. Again, he did not even measure what people were actually eating and their actual disease states other than cavities. <laughs> but unfortunately, this more modern foundation adopted his affinity for animal food and animal fat and is pushing it, saying, you know, eat all of this lard and butter and animal fat liberally, eat all this meat and dairy and blah blah Raw dairy is good, wrong. Soy is bad, wrong. Salt should be eaten in higher amounts, wrong. And then of course, just all of their weird pseudoscientific fringe beliefs promoting the GAP diet and weird like infections, curing cancer and stuff like that. You know, so next time you land on their website from something that might be a relevant topic, just, just know where you're landing. You're landing in a storm of misinformation. All right, once again, if you're interested in Seed's Daily Symbiotic, you can click the link below for 15% off your first month supply with Mike15 at checkout. And also let me know what you think in the comments down below of all of this. If anybody's ever hit you with a link to a page to the Weston A. Price Foundation, I've seen them around. Anyway, also feel free to like and subscribe, really helps the channel out and the algorithm and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. Got a bucket and a map, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>